Hi, this is Street Life, and I'm Natasha with a guide for building a cinder block barbecue pit. Last year, my mom decided to have a backyard party for her birthday. Hoping to do something a little different, I thought it would be a nice idea to roast the whole pig. So my gift to her was building the barbecue pit, procuring and roasting the pig. Memorial Day is right around the corner, which means summer is not too far behind. In this video, I'll cover building the pit, which is great if you're planning to have larger gatherings and need to feed a crowd, because you can use this to like um, barbecue other things as well. The next video will cover roasting a whole pig. So I just picked a little area here at the back of the house, just a bit off of the trees in a somewhat shady area but i don't want it right up next next to the trees so in case of like you know fire hazard and whatnot you got the yard it's not a huge yard so it's going to just be off to the side a bit and so it's going to be just a few feet off of the trees i'm thinking like in this spot here so here we begin with our materials you might not need all of them depending on your like um land situation set up a rubber mallet the four foot level a shovel a hoe and a rake that's gonna be for um like kind of leveling the ground we're not gonna be digging down too much just trying to make it a little bit level then here you have your actual materials which would be your um cinder blocks these are eight by eight by 16 and i have 36 of those you see my little gorilla cart there and then here i have some these are cinder block caps Typically, they would go at the top of your cinder block wall, but for my purpose, I'm going to actually use it to create the foundation. So it's going to be the base of the barbecue pit. And the measurements are 2 by 8 by 16. And so that's going to line like the inside of it because I don't want like the bottom of it to be dirt. And so for that, I have 24 of those. So pretty much these are your materials. I also have some um, expanded metal and um plywood which would be like the top the expanded metal will be your um like your your rack essentially and that's just going to be wedged between some of the um two of the levels okay and so we begin so the first thing i'm going to do is to um kind of get this fairly flat right so you have like a nice level area to work off of and then as an optional accessory, I just got a pair of these um, garden yard utility gloves. And I've got a hat too. See? Now, if you have an area in your yard that is relatively flat, or you have a spare concrete slab, the next part of this is going to go really fast because you will be able to just really go ahead and stack the cinder blocks in your area. In my case, I had to clear the ground. The first step that I took was using a rake to clear away the leaves. Just trying to give myself like a relatively neat area, or at least free from debris to work with. Just getting the leaves out the way. These were like dried leaves that were there probably from like the previous season. And I just really quickly just raked them up out the way. Next, I use the garden hoe just to start chopping away at the ground to create a hole, really an outline, roughly the size of the hole that I want to dig. The ground was relatively dry, so, you know, which is kind of like a gift and a curse. But um, using the hoe, I used it to kind of like break up the, the earth where I was going to be digging just to make it easier so I wouldn't be going with the shovel into this hard pack ground but then also using the sharp edge of the hoe to kind of just roughly cut an outline for the area where I wanted to dig. And then going back and forth between the rake, the hoe, and then eventually the shovel to kind of start forming the shape of this hole that I wanted to dig. And at the same time, um, leveling the area. And so once I had a rough outline for the hole that I wanted to dig. I went ahead and I got the level and I started using that to roughly lay the groundwork for figure out the areas where I might need to dig down a little bit and then the other areas where I might need to build up a little bit. Just going back and forth between the various tools to 
get roughly to you know get in the hole that I needed and so now you see there are like these roots and stuff here I'm just gonna trim them up just so like they're out the way they're not very thick just so like you have nice neat ground to work with nothing to really throw off the um the cinder block when you put them down so you can get it nice and level pretty much just clear in the ground here fortunately they're not very thick so I just have some little pruning shears here and I'll just use those just to clip it and um, clean up a little bit okay and so now here you have this um, area that I've dug up you see I got like some extra dirt here here to give you some perspective on the depth of it so I got like a little mound of dirt here and here I've dug out a space it's about um, six feet by four and a half feet across so what I've done is at the high point, I've just dug down a little bit and I'm then um, like leveling the dirt back. So it's like you'll have here would be dug out a little bit and then on this side here it'll be more flat. So and in between, I'm just going to flatten it out. So you'll end up with like a nice level space. What I'll do is on this side here, that's where I'm going to put my little smoker box. And then here would be like the main chamber and then you know, there you just have some extra space. Honestly, the most time consuming part of this project was preparing the hole. Like digging, raking, trying to get it level, trying to get it, you know, prepared for the cinder blocks. That took a good amount of time. I started relatively early in the morning. And as with most projects, you underestimate the amount of time that it's gonna take. And I spent, I was hoping it would just be like a few hours. It ended up being pretty much the entire day. And the bulk of that time was spent getting the hole just right. But, you know, persevere and just kept going back and forth from tool to tool, digging down a bit, getting it level, building up the points that were too low, digging down in the areas that were too high, and just continuing to push forward. Okay, and so now then, a little, a little bit more digging and leveling of the hole. It's going to need some, some work. You can see it's not perfectly level, like there's some bumps and stuff. So I'm just going to clean that up a little bit, and then I'll start laying down the, the bottom um, uh, flat cinder blocks. Okay, and so you can see I've started putting down the flat um, cinder blocks. And what I'm doing is just putting it in to kind of dry fit it. And I'm going to adjust the blocks accordingly to make it level. You know, I have like a, um, a little rubber mallet. So as you can see, one here is a little low on the one side. This is high. So I can build that one up and then I'll end up getting it all level. But this is what we're working with right now. I put them started off at that end rather than this end because this is where I'm going to put my um, little smoker box. So you can see I've just left a little gap here. So this is going to kind of bridge over. And if you can just imagine that right here, you're going to have just a little box where I'll put in the charcoal or your wood and things like that. You have a little open area right here, the chamber where smoke would come in. And yeah, you're good to go. So with that, I'm just going to continue laying in the rest of the um, cinder block caps. At this point, really just dry fitting them, making sure that they all fit. Um, and it's really the perimeter because um, that's really where you want to make sure it's good and level because that's where the weight of the cinder blocks are going to be resting. Okay, so now I have what's basically going to be the cornerstone, right? I have it level both ways. And so this, I'm going to now use as the guide to um, lay out the other um, cinder blocks. And so once I get this level and that's where, and that's level, for the most part, the rest of them should go in really quickly. And just adjusting along the way, um, built up in areas, lower down in others to get it as level as possible. And I did the three sides of the pit 
as I said, leaving the fourth side open because that was going to be a little bit different because at that side, I was going to need to accommodate space for the smoker box and the like little vent hole. So starting out, the primary focus was just getting the perimeter right, making sure that it was nice and level so that you would have a good foundation to build the walls upon. Okay. And so now then I have the bottom layer finally laid out. It took forever to get it all level and whatnot, but at least it's done. And now it's time so to- So once I had the perimeter laid out, I went ahead and just raked the middle out to get it relatively level by sight. And I just took two of the flat pavers and put them at the opposite end so I could make sure that like I had the right width. I've laid out all the blocks. The room around the outside is like level. In the middle, I just got it about, you know, using my eye because that doesn't have to be as precise. Nothing's going to rest in the middle, really. So now to start um, building up. I did. So I started with the um, cinder block on the bottom uh, going this way. And then on the next level, I went that way just to stagger the joints, which will help, you know, with stability. So you can see it here as well where I've turned the brick in. Stack and the rows and cinder blocks are probably the easiest part of the project. The difficult part is just that they're heavy. So be mindful of your feet, bend at the knees, not at the waist. I'm going to leave this area here not open, but I'm going to turn the um, cinder block on its side. So that way, like you see these here, all of them, the opening is pointing up. The one that goes here, you're going to have a little smoke chamber right here. This is where you're going to put your charcoal and whatnot. And the cinder block that I put here, I'm going to turn on its side so that way the smoke can get in that way, but it'll still offer support. Okay, so now you got four of the um, cinder block caps down. This is going to be the smoker box. So I just dug out like a little area around, got it fairly level, and then I just laid them out side by side. There was a little lip underneath where um, the caps meet, just about like less than an inch or so, and I just tucked it under. So you still have... You got a nice solid foundation. And then on top of this, I have some 6x8x16 by by cinder blocks, and I'm going to just put three of them around, and the charcoal will go inside of there. But the charcoal will go right here, and this block is on the side so the smoke can move through. And then I have like just a little cap to put on top, which is just a little piece of sheet metal. And there you go. So our reinforced metal is going to go on the between the um, top and the next level of our cinder blocks. So here I have the two bottom levels of the cinder block, but what I'm doing is just taking an extra step to line the inside of the pit with foil. This is optional, but it should help to make cleanup very easy. You line the entire inside of the pit with foil going along the bottom in one direction, um, taking care that you don't cover that vent hole and then going in the opposite direction with pieces of foil and just taking your hands and poking down the ends into the holes of the cinder block so that way they stay in place and folding into the corners. Once you're done with that, you go ahead, you put your metal grate and then you put your top layer of cinder blocks and that'll help the weight of the cinder blocks will help to keep your grates in place and it'll help to keep the foil in place as well. This way when you're done, you just take off the top level of the cinder blocks, which would be pretty easy to do. Pull out your foil, dump that, you know, clean down your grates and you'll be good to go. So for the final touch, I got two pieces of sheet metal, one small piece for the smoke chamber and then a larger piece for the top of the pit. And pretty much all I did with this was just drill holes in them to attach handles to make them easier to move about. One change or modification that I plan to make is at the time it was a relatively thin piece of metal. It did the job, but I'm trying to put it on 
or take it off while the pit is in use. It's very flexible and with it being hot, it moves around more than I wanted it to. So the one modification that I plan to make is to get a piece of plywood and attach it to the outside of the sheet metal to make it a bit more rigid and then also to have it hopefully serve as a bit of a heat shield. And here I just have this temperature gauge that I bought and that I'm going to put in the middle. Just a control bit, put a hole in the middle right there. This will drop in. It has a washer and a nut to hold it in place. And that will give you like a temperature so you can get a read as far as what the temperature is within the, um, the smoking chamber. So here you have it. It's not secure. And that's your smoke chamber. And this is your pit. And I got that in place. Thanks for tuning in. To ensure you don't miss any episodes, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and check out my cooking at home playlist. Go ahead and click that thumbs up button if you like what you saw, and go ahead and share it on social media.